you just drive up 75, even to Williamstown or into Cincinnati, you'll see on the side of the road these, you know, these barns that are just kind of dilapidated. And they're just sitting there and, you know, have been forgotten. And uh, that's what Nathan does. He goes and takes the wood and brings it in and cleans it up. And then it ends up being in a $300,000 house, you know, and people walk on it and it's beautiful. When Nathan and I started dating and he told me what he was doing and he told me he was kind of involved in this wood thing. He was um, saying that he just basically is selling a bunch of rotten wood and you know, it's, it's this really kind of weird gig, but there is a market out there. Most people don't realize that as you look across the United States, 400 years ago, a squirrel could have jumped in a tree in the Northeast and actually never hit the ground and gone all the way to some parts of Texas, because that's how much forest we had in this country. Huge, massive, massive timbers, and you know, a lot of the timber was cut down. And so the trees that were cut down, those are trees that don't exist as we look around our world today. Most people who aren't in the business that we're in, they just see it as firewood, kind of garbage wood that's either, sometimes it is in a garbage pile, sometimes in a burn pile. But what happens is we take that wood and it gets shipped here to our plant and it goes through our various production lines. Uh, first it gets denailed and trimmed, species identified, and then it goes into the kiln, which kills all the bugs, takes the moisture content out, it gets planed, it gets cut, and then it comes over here to our mill and it gets turned into uh, a wide range of products, flooring, paneling, tabletops, countertops, furniture, architectural accents. Even though he's a small business, you know, he's reaching out to California and all over the world. And just the fact that he has a, a willingness to work with people, no matter what their background is, and give them a chance to work. It's not a large workforce, but, you know, it makes a difference for the people that are there. So at Old World Timber, one of the things we're trying to do is not only reclaim redeem and repurpose the products that we're making, but we're also trying to do that in our own lives as we're doing it. And so we've found a lot of really amazing, talented guys uh, over the last few years. Some of them have records that really make it very difficult for them to find a job. There is a fear in our society about doing business with people that have been incarcerated, and but I applaud the businesses that are willing to take the risk of hiring someone, give them a second chance. From 1989 to December of 2015, I was incarcerated. So I've only been out of prison for since December of last year. So the last 30 years, it, it's, it's kind of different for me, you know, it's, and, and I'm saying that shamefully because of the mistakes I made that landed me in prison. 27 years incarcerated, no skills, doesn't have transportation, you know, nothing but trouble. Most employers would think that, well, that's too much trouble. We're like, Nathan doesn't think that. For me, getting out of prison, he took a chance on me, and that's something I, I greatly appreciate him for, and uh, it's something that I've never let him down on. Nathan sees something that can be reused in the wood product. He also sees it in people. Charlie, you know, started here, he, he, he hadn't really ever even had a job ever in his whole life, which is hard to really get your mind around. He had never had a bill in his name. He had never had to show up at a certain time and work till a certain, he, he just never experienced all of that which so many of us have. Nathan came home one day and told me that he had taken Charlie to McDonald's for the first time in his life. He had never been to a fast food, to a McDonald's. I took him to Walmart and he had never even been in a Walmart. Now that's hard for us to even imagine. The world was just so new and so different to him. I'm sure that was overwhelming to him. Learning the machinery is a big part of my growing experience here at this place where I work at now. One day I said, Charlie, you think you can run that machine? And he was like, well, I have no idea how to even turn it on. If you give me an opportunity, I'm all about it. I was intimidated about it because it's got a big control box in the front. You got all these levers you got to work because it's an expensive piece of machinery and I was afraid I was going to mess something up. Nathan spoke to me after that and he said, listen, you're going to break a blade, you're going to cut a nail in half or whatever. He said, don't worry about it, it's part of it. Well, a few days later I come and, and there's all of these massive logs that are now sawed up into boards. And I was like, who did all this? And he was like, I did. 
is that okay? And I said, oh my gosh, and I just totally freaked out. I said, Charlie, that's exactly what that machine is supposed to be doing, and you are now doing it. He also thanks me almost every day for his job, which I told him he needs to stop doing because this company gets way more out of him than he gets out of this company, uh, that's for sure. Second chances are not easy to come by, and once you do get a second chance, you want to do everything you can to make sure that you uh, earn that person's trust that gave you the second chance. That's where I'm at now. Like the sign says out there, redeem, reclaim, and repurpose, that's the, that's the whole point.